Petar Brzitza, how many lives have been taken by the war? How much pain and sorrow it brought? Opening a new page in history, we close the old ones. But sometimes you need to go back and open long forgotten sheets and remember what should never happen again. Petar Brzitza is a bloody ripper, a fanatic devoted to the ideas of National Socialism who sent thousands of innocent people to another world and who unfortunately remained unpunished. Another tragic injustice of war. It seems to me that everyone knows about the cruelty of Nazis. The concentration camps of death like Auschwitz, Dachau, Treblinka, Breitnau are conveyors for the destruction of human lives. And this is only a small part of everything that the Nazis did during the years of the war. This story begins in Italy in 1929 with the lawyer Antti Pavlich, Warmly devoted to the ideas of the National Socialist Workers' Party, he creates the Ustasi organization, and in 1940 he signs an agreement with Hitler and Mussolini, according to which he helps Nazi Germany and Italy achieve their desired goals in the division of the whole world, and in return they recognize Croatia as an independent state, headed by, of course, Pavlic. In 1941 the Yugoslav army was defeated, and Ante began to build a better world, following the example of Nazi Germany. In Yugoslavia, not everything was good for a long time. The ideas of higher and lower races were increasingly voiced among xenophobic youth. The number of radicals who were programmed to a stable national hostility towards the Serbs increased in the country, and then it evolved into general hatred. They sought drastic measures against the Serbs, one of these was the hero of this article. Petar Bzitza was born in 1917, graduated from the Faculty of Law at the college. He was briefly a member of the Great Order of the Crusaders, and he wanted to change the future of his country. Then he was a member of several radical organizations, but was disappointed by their inaction and empty chatter, eventually leaving them. He served in the army of the independent state of Croatia for several years and retired with the rank of lieutenant. In search of himself, for a long time he could not find a place where he would feel good. At this time Ante Pavlic needed a loyal and fanatical comrade in arms who would kill anyone who would stand in his way. And exactly Petar became his such a dog. At that time, on the territory of Yugoslavia, at the suggestion of Ustasha, the Yasenovac concentration camp began to form, which was located in 60 kilometers from Zagreb. This place was perfect for people like Brzitza. As one of Petar's Ustasha colleagues, Mili Budak, said, We will destroy one part of the Serbs, we will evict the other, we will convert the rest to the Catholic faith and turn them into Croats. Thus, their traces will soon be lost, and what remains will only be a bad memory of them. For Serbs, Gypsies and Jews we have three million bullets. One of the most famous crimes of Petar Brzitza is the night of August 28th to 29th of 1942, when he took part in a competition to kill captured Serbs on a dare. The essence of the competition was not difficult. Whoever kills more is the winner. Cruel, cold-blooded and merciless Petar won. During that night he killed 1,360 people. He used a special knife, Serbesek, designed by Pavlic's personal order, which was created so that soldiers could execute people as quickly as possible and at the same time be as tired as possible. For such successes he received the recognition of Rabid colleagues, a nominal watch from the hands of Pavlic and a cash prize. Fate favored him, but one day, at some point, something did not go according to plan. Petar was left alone with the prisoners, but could not cope with them. They united, attacked and beat him badly. He miraculously managed to survive and later brutally avenged his offenders. 
The Ustasha's organized the genocide of Serbs, Jews and Gypsies, and many concentration camps were created under their leadership. According to various estimates, from 197,000 to 800,000 Serbs, 30,000 Jews and 80,000 Gypsies died from the Pavlic regime. Many of the deeds of the Ustasha's were justified precisely by the wrong faith. Some Yugoslav historians, in turn, believed that Croatian nationalism and the Ustasha movement were just a tool in the hands of the Vatican, which launched a new crusade into the Balkans in order to expand the spheres of influence of Catholicism. Throughout the duration of the war, Pope Pius XII repeatedly received reports of crimes committed against the Orthodox population and the participation of Catholic priests in them, but refused to do anything and condemn the atrocities. But the highest court determines that every evil must be punished. This is what every reasonable as well as adequate person understands. And when the troops of the Allies and the Comintern defeated Nazi Germany, Many of those who had been killing, torturing and mocking people for so many years ended up at the Nuremberg Tribunal, where they got what they deserved for their misdeeds. Yes, many, but not all. So how did the story of Petar Brzitza, one of the bloodiest members of the Ustasha, end it? Most of the Ustashas, including Pavlic and Brzitza, fled the country on the so-called Red Trail organized by Catholic priests. Unfortunately, this is one of those exceptions when the executioner did not end his life on the scaffold. Petar managed to escape punishment and secretly moved to the United States. At some point, the police became interested in him and figured out his real identity. And it seems that he should have received his punishment, but the outbreak of the Cold War aggravated relations between capitalist America and socialist Yugoslavia. Therefore, the US leadership refused to extradite Brzitza to Belgrade, and this time the executioner was allowed to leave. So politics intervened and did not allow justice to be done. After the 1970s, his traces were completely lost. In the 1990s, Yugoslavia and Israel made repeated demands for his extradition, but they were again ignored. According to some rumors, Petar Brzitza lived to a ripe old age and died in 2010 at the age of 93 without getting what he deserved for his deeds on earth.